Hello, I'm Mayor Karen Cadger, and I'm here today with Police Chief Bruce McMahon, our Executive Director of the Council on Aging, Linda Talbot, and our Fire Chief, David Motter. And what we'd like to do today is we'd like to talk a little bit about emergency preparedness and a new program that uh, is being instituted through our uh, Council on Aging Director. So first of all, um, I'd like to talk to you, Chief. Could you explain the role of the police department in this? Yes, Mayor. Um, the role of the police department in any public safety emergency is to provide safety and security uh, to the community. That can be anything from crowd control, uh, traffic control, um, setting up zones where we need to exclude people from. Uh, any emergency could include a, include a crime scene where we'd want to, uh, to uh, barrier that off. Uh, we also have the responsibility as uh, first responders to provide emergency first aid, to work and coordinate with all of the departments in the city, the fire department, emergency services, as far as the ambulance, the Board of Public Works, uh, and also uh, in the event of a major uh, emergency like um, a blizzard or a flooding, we would want to go and we want to check on residents uh, to make sure that they were secure in their homes or if they were uh, prepared ahead of time. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but you feel the way that we have it set up with our departments that it's, it runs extremely well. I think we, we do one of the best jobs in the area. Um, we work very well with the fire department. We work very well with the ambulance. We work very well with the Board of Public Works and all the administrative offices in the city. And uh, I think that uh, just from past experience with the microburst that happened a few months ago, uh, everything went really smooth. Um, and uh, I'm very proud to be, uh, to be the chief of the police department and work with such good people. Same here, and I think that message came back to us many times, how well all the departments work together as a team, just getting the job done at hand. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a good feeling to be able to let uh, our residents know how well uh, all of the departments work together, you know, in their best interest. And uh, we want to provide some additional information to the residents on how they can make themselves better prepared and safer in the event of emergencies. Great. And uh, Chief Motter, would you explain to me what is the role of the fire department in this American emergency prepared program? Here in East Hampton, uh, the citizens get a two for one out of the fire department. Not only are we the fire department, we also provide the ambulance service, which is at a paramedic level ambulance service. Basically, we're bringing the emergency room to the door of, of the patient. The ambulance service in the last 20 years has gone from basic life support. We're basically, we're giving oxygen, controlling bleeding. Now they're given medications to reverse cardiac incidents to help lessen the damage from stroke. So the emergency uh, medical service side of the fire department is our busiest and provides the most professional and the highest level of care that the citizens of East Hampton could expect. I agree. Also under the fire department, I wear, have the role of emergency management director which is working with our state and federal partners whenever there's an incident, such as Chief McMahon mentioned, is the microburst, and planning and working with them to develop the plans that we executed on that day, where everything to the outsider seemed to go off uh, seamless and without a hitch. <laughs> uh, but as we know, it, it's always organized chaos that we manage. So working with the police and DPW whenever there is an incident in town, the three agencies provide uh, no one of them has a bigger pie than the, a piece of pie than the other. All three of them take ownership to get it done. The other thing that we've done recently um, through your office and through the Mass Emergency Management Agency was we were able to purchase the Code Red Mass Notification System to notify citizens of, like, unfortunately, the last two months, parking bans and Mountain Road closed, but it has so many other uses, both emergency and non-emergency, that it's going to help our citizens prepare for when and if we have those major disasters. That's right, we'll have it perfected by then too. Yes, we will. <laughs> so Linda, as the Director of the Council on Aging, mm -hmm. what do you feel that your department, the Council on Aging's role in this is, and how does it affect you? Okay, um, we've learned from past experience, um, especially that October snowstorm that we had a few years ago, that um, we would like to better know 
our senior in the pop in East Hampton. Um, right now, there's 25 percent of the population are 60 and over. And what we did during that snowstorm was pretty much when we were able to get around was to drive door to door to people to check on them. So what we're doing now is we're trying to do a more um, coordinated program called Are You Prepared? So, so these bags, if you can hold that, Karen. Of course, be happy to. Um, it's kind of our way of reminding people to be prepared for an emergency. So what's in this bag is a three-day supply of food items, such as milk, candy bars, wow. um, shelf milk, yeah, candy bars, nuts, candy granola, bars. yes, <laughs> granola bars. Because um, basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, people are pretty much on their own for the first 48 to 72 hours, correct? That's correct. Yeah. correct. Which means um, you really need to be responsible for yourself. And our biggest concern is that there are many, very many hardy souls out there who are very independent, but there's also people who need to have information um, so that if they want to go to a warming shelter for the day, a warming center for the day, or an overnight shelter, we're able to drive around and provide that information to people in the event of an emergency so that people will be better prepared and have the information that they need. Yes, that's a wonderful little. There's, there's a lot of items in this bag. Oh, yes, there are. But it basically says that you should have a three-day supply of non-perishable food, including water. Um, don't forget the pets. Um, have extra prescriptions on hand. And in this other bag, which we have been selling for $25 at our cost, is if Karen can hold oh, up. I love this. This is a AM FM radio, and it's also a lantern and a flashlight. And it runs on three... C batteries, which are included, and in the event of an emergency, um, you're able to listen to the radio to get updated information. And also in the bag are a strobe light, which you can put in your window in the event that you need assistance, and it can be seen for up to a half a mile away, and an emergency <coughs> blanket. It doesn't look like a blanket. It, it is a blanket. Um, Small. Chief, <laughs> need a blanket. <laughs> also in our newsletter is what we have is, our, is our, an emergency contact form. And what we're doing is we're asking residents um, who require assistance or would like information um, brought to them, whether it's in person, it lists your name, your address, your telephone number, if you live alone, your emergency plan, which would be, are you staying at home? Um, would you like to go to an overnight shelter, a daytime shelter, um, like a warming center, or stay with friends and family? Because that was one of the problems we had last time was when we went out to over 70 homes, we weren't sure if people had gone with relatives or not, which is, you know, very important. So you don't know if they're in there we not. don't know. And there, there were a few people that did need medical attention. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So if anyone is interested in um, filling this out or needs assistance filling it out, we can help you with that. But we, we need the information. And it's really to, to benefit you. Um, during this last snowstorm where we were supposed to get two feet and ended up getting one feet, thank God, um, I personally made over 115 telephone calls before the storm. Um, so I pretty much reached out to everyone who was 90 and over in our community just to check in with them. So um, it's a daunting task, but if we had your information, I think it would help not only the Council on Aging, but also the police and fire to make sure that you are okay and that you are prepared. No, it's not a, definitely not an invasion of their privacy. It's just something so that you can assist them and help Correct. them in any type of an emergency. Right. So what was your response when you made all those calls? Were people very happy about it? Yes, I think they were. People were very, were, people were very good. And we also said that we would follow up with them if, if need be after the storm. And they, and they felt comfortable knowing that we were there to check in on them. Some people were like, well, this is New England and this is what we do. 
but you know if you are even during the summertime if we have you know a tornado or what have you and you don't have food you don't have water um, you are pretty much on your own for the first you know two to three days and sometimes people don't realize that until a disaster strikes. Well, I think you just brought up a really important point. It's not just about snow. People think of all the disasters with the winter. It's not just about that. As you just mentioned, the power outages can Correct. be for a number of reasons. Yes. And don't wait till something happens and you're not prepared. You might as well just have everything ready. Right. And then when it happens, hopefully it doesn't ever happen, but you're all set to go. And you'd be prepared. Right. Yeah. So I know also that um, we've met um, with the chiefs and yourself a couple of times too about talking about maybe you know um, extending the benefits that the that the uh, senior center council on aging enrichment Correct. center provides maybe even getting uh, applications in for a generator mm -hmm. for that type of thing in right. the future. Right. I know that we we have opened up as a warming center and also as um, a cooling center during the winter and summer months kind of unofficially um, and we try to pot, provide cold and hot beverages for people during that time and that's great you know we've been in contact about and I'm pretty sure that in that October storm where we were without um, power for a while wasn't it your um, Gary our your van um, driver Hi. that was shuttle yes. shuttling people from East Hampton to the shelter yes. at Smith Boat we had two, the two vans and my car, and we were pretty much driving people from East Hampton of all ages, mm -hmm. actually, to the overnight shelter in Northampton. Um, I brought a gentleman over who refused to leave in his late 80s because he didn't want to leave his dog behind. Um, the shelter does provide for their pets, so he did go to the shelter. I personally took him myself with his dog. He could not go over physically to check the dog in, so I did that for him. And That's important information because I don't blame people. A lot of people are very concerned with their pets yes. and don't want to leave them. Yes, but so. they do provide for your pet at Smith Vocational. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Chief McMahon, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I would just ask that all people be patient uh, in the event of a disaster or an emergency situation. What they have to realize is, is that both the police and the fire and the Board of Public Works are still doing their day-to-day -day tasks along with an emergency situation. Uh, and that includes our dispatch center. Mm -hmm. And our dispatch center can be totally overwhelmed with calls. Mm -hmm. uh, in the event of like the, uh, the microburst, we literally received hundreds of calls um, for that event. And uh, people have to be patient and understand that there are many emergencies taking place and we will eventually get to them, mm -hmm. but it may take some time. So that's why it's really important that people be prepared uh, they take the proper precautions and, uh, you know, just let us do our job. And again, be prepared to be on your own for a day or two. Exactly. And, and also, that's a really good point because we cannot shuttle them mm -hmm. to a different community or a different shelter if our roads are, themselves are not passable. Correct. So, well, thank you, Chief Motter. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And thank you, Chief McMahon, for being here and providing this information. And I hope you'll all use it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get a hold of our director, Linda, and she'll provide you with any information you need so that you can be totally prepared mm -hmm. for any emergency that hopefully doesn't come our way. Thank you. Thank you.